Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth video where I answer your questions. Uh, no debauchery in this episode, although I do want to point out I did have two cigars just a couple hours ago. And I still have my flyers lighter in the room. Look at this, flyers. Ooh. They are better than your team. I'm kind of giving you the finger too, unintentionally. It's kind of funny. Okay, anyway, um, <clears throat> where we leave off? Um, here we go. The first questions are by our good friend Lord Noir Six. Um, we've already had some, but there's more. So here we go. Four. Which countries outside the Western Hemisphere would you like to visit? Well, you know, pretty much anywhere would be a good place to visit, but if I was to put the places that I want to see the most. I don't know, I'm just kind of, I've always been interested in, um, call me crazy, but I'm interested in the places that are more reclusive and disconnected from the rest of the world. For instance, I think it would be really cool to, you know, see what North Korea is like firsthand. I mean, this of course would be assuming that I can get in and out safely and not be harassed while I was there, you know. Same about Iran, even though they're not quite as disconnected, it would still be cool to go to Tehran and see what uh, that is all like. But other than that, I'd, you know, I'd really like to visit, um, you know, I really want to see what China's like, because it's been going through a huge economic boom. I really want to see, you know, the, the contrast between, like, the old poor China and the new wealthy China. Um, where else would I like to go? I guess Western Europe would be counted in that because it's technically not the Western Hemisphere. So I'd like to visit London. I'd like to visit Berlin and Paris and, you know, various European cities with a lot of history in them. I'd like to go to Sweden, too, because uh, I have ancestors from there. Not sure from which town, but still it'll be nice to see. And, um, yeah, well, those are some examples. All right, five. Will you ever get consider getting the following games? A. SimCity Societies, B. Civ 4, and C. Civ 5. SimCity Societies, probably not. I've heard nothing really good about it, um, so it seems kind of unlikely. Civ 4, most likely, yeah, at some point I will eventually get Civ 4, because it's really held up the test of time by now, and people do like it. As for Civ 5, eh, I don't know. It hasn't really gotten good reviews from people who I would trust to say these kind of things. Oh, hold on, let me adjust this. Oh, there we go. So, mm, if I get Civ 5, it's not going to be for like a really long time. Alright. Six. What LP -er did you start watching on a regular basis this year? Meaning 2011. How else do some members do not count? Um, I'd say the one LP -er that I started watching this year was Nintendo Capri Sun. Um, you know, I've been aware of him, certainly, for a number of years before this, but I never really watched him, but then my, um, forum friend, Eric the Awesome, kept nagging me and nagging me to check out his Conquer Let's Play, and I finally did, and it's just one of the most fun I've had watching an LP in, um, a while. Not since the days of Sir Ron Lionheart, have I enjoyed watching a Let's Play so much. I mean, maybe Rao Cowan, The Untitled Story, is another one that's up there, but... Nintendo Capri Sun, playing Conker's Bad for a Day for Nintendo 64, was just perfect. And, um, you know, I've watched him sporadically since then, but that Let's Play was just amazing, and I recommend you all check it out, because... It's a great game. Uh, Tim, which is his real name, he's a great commenter. And the two, their styles just go so well together. It's very, it's very cool. I sort of see him almost like a 10 year old version of, or 10, 10 more years than me old. What am I trying to say? He's like me, but 10 years older. He's in his 30s, and he's like a lovable loser, kind of like me. And I think that he would agree with that characterization, and I mean it with all due respect. He's not really a loser, but it's just a characterization, I guess. Okay. 
Um, seven. What was the worst Let's Play you ever made? Criteria for these stuff might vary between people, so I will let you decide your own criteria. I don't know. I don't think any Let's Play I've done has been very bad. Uh, well, if I was to really think about it, um, anything Mario that I've done, my Mario skills are nowhere near what my Sonic skills are, and I use a lot of save scumming, so, I mean, um, if you compare Rao Cow's original Let's Play of ASMT and my Let's Play of ASMT, um, mine definitely looks very amateurish, you know. Not something you'd expect from a guy with thousands of subscribers. It's the kind of let's play you'd expect with somebody from somebody with like 30 subscribers, half of which are like friends from his school or whatever. So, just because of the amateurish and the save scumming and the not that great Mario skills, I'm probably gonna go with the ASMT let's play. Even though I don't think it was a bad let's play, it was certainly the least good. I'll uh, I'll give it that. Um. Okay, more by Lord Noise. Eight, when would you consider yourself to be financially stable? Just in general, um, or me specifically? Well, in general, I would say if you have enough money to meet your daily expenses, plus a little bit of wiggle room for things that come up, like emergencies or anything that might be of short notice, and a little bit of money just to have a little fun once in a while. Um, do I do I have that right now? I kind of do, actually. It's um, kind of interesting. I might not be making much money, but I'm also not spending much money, and I can sort of support myself at this point. So that's good. Um, it's a very good thing. I don't necessarily rely on my parents for anything financially, although it is nice when they buy me pants and shirts and things like that, which they still do sometimes. Um, okay. Number nine. Do you think that you should take up some college courses? If so, what courses would you like to take? Um, why do I have so many windows open? Hold on, let me close some windows. Oh, look, Neon Cat for ten hours is still open. Uh, and now everything is getting fr frozen. I don't know if you can hear that, but oh, whatever. Um, close that. Anyway, to answer your question, um, about college, I, if you saw my, I forget what blog it was, but it was a recent one where I talked about this, I want to make 2012 the idea, or the year where Leslie Spike happens, or doesn't, you know, I'm going to give it an effort, if I can keep my wits about me, and... Hopefully something will happen, but if it doesn't, I plan to go back to college in 2013, which is going to be nine years from when I originally went to college. As for what I'm going to take, if that happens, that's going to be hard to say right now. It's going to require a lot of thought, but probably something business-related. Um, business management, accounting, finances, something like that. But then again, there's a lot of time between now and then where I might change my mind. Or, Leslie Spike could work out and the entire question becomes moot. So we'll see what happens. Um, ten. What do you think are the most important qualities of a woman that you would consider dating? Well, she has to be, you know, at least somewhat attractive. I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't reject a woman outright for being not super hot, but you know, it. she doesn't, if she looks like an ogre, I wouldn't want to be with her, but you know, if she's like sort of just plain looking, you know, cute, but not hugely attractive, that's fine. I mean, that's how my ex-girlfriend was. She was cute. Um, I mean, she was like small and mousy, but she was kind of cute, but she wasn't like hot, I would say, but she was attractive enough for me. Uh, so... That's the kind of bar I would set. I mean, if she was hot, that would be awesome. But it's not necessary. Um, other than looks, I need a girl who has a brain in her head. Because there's a lot of girls out there that just 
never really developed their minds because they are just so used to getting everything handed to them just because they have tits. It's very common. And that sort of ties into my next point. I can't have a woman who has a sense of entitlement. And these days in our modern culture, women, for the most part, just have the sense of entitlement that they think that just because they have boobs, they are to be treated specially and sort of put on a pedestal. And I want a woman who, you know, you know, she expects respect for herself but she doesn't demand that people kiss her ass, basically. You know, she needs to know that she is no higher than me, but also no lower. You know, we're equal partners, and the relationship is give and take. I definitely need that. And I want a woman who can sort of handle me in a way, because I'm not a high-maintenance person, really, but I do have a very intense personality. Like, I come on real strong and I need somebody who can handle that and I need a girl with a strong personality herself I can't overshadow somebody I mean that's sort of the situation that happened with my parents in reverse my mom has a very strong personality but my dad even though he's a smart guy and he's a good guy he doesn't really have a strong personality so my mom pretty much completely dominates the household just because of her personality. I sort of got that more dominating personality from my mom, whereas my sister is a little bit more um, meek and mellow, like my dad. And, of course, that set it up for tons of battles between my mom and I as we grew up, or I grew up. Um, whereas my sister didn't really have as many, because she's more of a, a, a personality that's more subdued in many ways. So, I would want a woman who has a stronger personality. Um, and so, yeah, those are a reasonable list of things I'd want in a woman. Okay. Eleven. When do you think that your dark era, the time after you dropped out and broke up with your girlfriend, will end? You can avoid this question if you want to. Well, I don't want to avoid this question. I don't like avoiding questions, and this is a pretty important question that, you know, needs to be answered. Um, this dark period that I always talk about, um, I always put its beginning in 2006. And if I, if I say it begun in 2006, I'm now almost up to six years in this period of darkness. Now, keep in mind, this isn't just like one continuous block of misery. It's just a general malaise that gets better and worse with times. Like, sometimes I'll be relatively happy and think that things are going kind of okay, and then other times I'll just be very miserable. But overall, you know, life, I would rank it like, on the, uh, on the scale of 1 to 10, it would be like, you know, it, it hovers around 3, I would say. Um, not very high. But it's not a one, you know? Some days I feel like a one. Some days I feel like a five. I barely ever go above five, really. So, since it fluctuates between one and five, I would say the average is three. But your question is, when will it end? Well, every... Almost... Um, throughout the, these last six years, I've, almost, I've always thought the end was just around the corner. Or at least that's what I thought at first. But then things just got worse and worse. I mean, they sort of bottomed out in the last couple of years. But, you know, I still have that hope that the dark period will end. Because I refuse to believe that the rest of my life will be grim. You know, I refuse to believe the rest of my life will be depressing. I just hope that at some point I'm going to be able to pull myself out of this. And... I'm hoping it's going to be in 2012, but if it takes longer, it takes longer. You know, it's already been six years. Um, once it's gone six years, it's not inconceivable that it will go seven or eight or ten, but I'm going to work hard to make sure that it doesn't. You know, that's just what that is. Okay. Um... Okay, we have a f 
another series of questions by Wario Land Gold Pyramid. Um, we're starting with number 19. So, number 19. What do you want to invent later in my in life? Oh, I think I think of invention ideas all the time, and some of them are very ridiculous and outlandish. But something I always wanted, I want a little electronic device that you press a button and it sends a signal, and you have like six or seven little receivers that you can attach these tiny little receivers to your car keys, to your wallet, to your cell phone, to anything you usually lose, and it just beeps. Like, the keypad would have buttons on it that would say wallet, um, keys, and you're like, oh, where's my wallet? Let me press the wallet button. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, there it is, you know. And I think that would just be very useful, especially for someone like me who is a bit cluttered. I mean, a little bit of crap on the back. Actually, it's just blankets, so it's not much. But, you know, it would be very nice to have that sort of thing. It's like, beep, 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 beep. Oh, there it is. That would be very helpful. That's what I wanted to invent. But, you know, I have a whole lot of other invention ideas, and maybe I'll make videos about them when I, uh, when they occur to me. Okay. Um, 20. When you die, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as a heroic conqueror who vanquished his enemies. Um, I don't know really, but I would hope that, um, I think all that I want is to be remembered at all. Um, whether it's fond memories or it's, um, you know, just eh memories or just like, I don't know if I want to be hated. I don't want to do stuff in my life that would end up getting me hated. But if that happens, whatever. I just want to be remembered in some way. Um, but I'd like to be remembered as a great, intelligent, handsome visionary who um, brought so much joy and so much innovation into the world and just made the world a better place than he found it. And I want people to be so compelled by me that they erect statues of me, they build temples to honor me, and um, when girls um, have sex with their boyfriends, they picture me instead of their boyfriends while they have sex. That's how I want to be remembered. Okay. 21. When is, mo when is the Moving Day movie coming out? This is going to infuriate all of you, but the movie has been sitting finished on my computer since June. Yes, six months. I just have not uploaded it, and there's a reason. There, I have not made the music for it, and I didn't want to upload it until the music was made. Um, if you want, if you really want to see it, music or no music, um, just tell me so, and maybe I'll just upload it without music, because whatever, you know. I'll get, you know, the Leslie Spike thing hasn't really started yet, so. Maybe waiting for the music, waiting for music to arrive is going to be not really worth it. Um, 22. Will you be taking Let's Eat request? Sure. Um, I will eat anything you want me to eat as long as it is, you know, edible and is easy for me to buy and or prepare myself. I mean... Don't ask me to eat things that I can't easily find at any store, you know. Just common foods I will eat. Maybe slightly uncommon if they're still common enough to be found. But sure, I'll take a Let's Eat request. I like eating, um, and I would like to delight you with that. Uh, 23. How could you not be embarrassed of video? And they give me a link. I mean, really, being nude and eating a sandwich? He's probably talking about my Let's Eat video where I ate the cheesesteak. Hell no. I am not ashamed of that one iota. I stand behind that video with all my energy. Because that was goddamn sexy. And I was born without shame. And it was a wonderful thing. And I 
We'll do more Let's Eat videos in the vein, that vein. I'm not sure if I'll do them shirtless. Uh, the only reason I did that video shirtless was I happened to not have a shirt on when I turned on the camera. So, whatever. It just sort of happened that way. But next time I probably won't. Okay. Um, okay, we're going back to Lord Noah's 6 for the next couple questions. 12. If you were born in the 1840s and saw the American Civil War break out, where would you want to live and what party would you support? Well, clearly I'd be on the Union side. Um, you know, everyone knows Lincoln is my favorite president. And I, you know, it was really more than just about slavery. It was about the northern way of life, of industry and progressiveness, versus the southern way of life, which is basically the plantation lifestyle and, you know, the life of leisure, at least for the upper classes there. And um, I think the northern way of life was much better. And because the northern way of life triumphed, we sort of paved a way for us to become a superpower in, you know, 80 years after. Um, it was the start of that. Um, the industrial development we had in the late 19th and early 20th century um, was all part of getting to that point. And um, we were sort of held back by being tethered to the southern way of life. But we also were better off um, together than divided. So I'm glad that the North won. It would I would have been a soldier for the North, I think. Um, I would have wanted to live here in Pennsylvania, I think. Um, prefer not to live in Gettysburg, though, because that was attacked. But it'd be good to live around here in the Philly area, which was a one of the most important cities back then, as it is now. And I would have liked to have fought for the Union. That would have been good. Although I wouldn't have liked to have my leg blown off and then have the rest of it amputated while all I got to soothe my pain was a shot of whiskey and a rag to put between my mouth. Um, so I wouldn't bite my own lip off as I screamed in pain as the saw cut my leg off, because that sounds painful. Um, okay. Thirteen. What is your part opinion on free market capitalism? Eh. You know, I used to hate it. I still don't, strictly speaking, like it too much. There's a lot of good in capitalism, but, um... Free market capitalism is as much of an idealistic and utopian idea as is Marxism. And we are about as far away from true, mar true free market capitalism as Stalinist Russia was away from true communism. What we have in America right now is corporatism, and which actually inclines a lot more towards fascism than it does towards true capitalism. I believe we need a blend of socialist and capitalist elements in our system because, you know, capitalism really does inspire people to be innovative, to be productive, and to be competitive, but it's too much so. And you re it really um, does not bode well for any society that wants to be strong and cohesive. That's why you need the social element. You know, you need the uh, social, the elements of socialism. You know, and we have elements of socialism in America. The, uh, you know, the whole idea of a welfare state is a socialist idea that we have. And it's good. It's necessary. If we didn't have social security, if we didn't have, you know, state-run schools and police services, Imagine a world where we only had private police. We don't want that. Um, so, capitalism is okay, but if it's blended with socialism, it's even better. Um, okay. 14. What is your opinion on the Sims fan base on YouTube? Um, are you talking about my Sims fan base or the fan base in general? Because the fan base in general. You know, there's a lot of good Sims movies out there. I don't really watch them. <laughs> it might surprise people to know, or maybe not, that I'm not really too into The Sims, really. It's just like one 
to me, it's one of many games I play. Um, but, you know, somehow I've gotten the reputation as a Sims guy, just because my Sims series were so good. Because no one's really done anything like what I've done. I mean, a couple have, but mine is the most prominent among the Let's Play style, long-running Sims 2 shows. I mean, there are a lot of people who made Sims 2 music videos and short Sims 2 series that have far more attention than I ever hoped to attain, but as far as the longer shows, I'm the one who has pretty much the uh, premiere series, if I do say so myself. Um, but the fan base for my shows... Um, it does inspire a certain loyalty when you have a long-running program like what I do. And I really do want to make more Sims 2. So hopefully I'll be getting Sony Vegas in January or some other recording program or editing program. Okay. 15. How do you think... What do you think will become of global politics in the next hundred years? How different will it be compared to the last hundred? Well... I couldn't predict the world in 2011 from 2006. So how can I predict the world in 2111 from now? I'm, but you know, we have to look at trends in history, you know, grander trends to think about where we are now. Um, I think it's very likely that China might overtake America as the premier power in the world, although that's not a given. Um, America might retain it, India might become the main power, maybe a country that we don't really think about now might become the premier power. It's really hard to know, um, but I'm pretty sure the world in a hundred years, the balance of power is going to be entirely different. Um, the way politics are run is probably going to be entirely different. I mean, what we have now is pretty different than anything that we've ever had, although we came close to it in the, you know, the 20s and the Gilded Age. We're kind of going back to that in a way, but, you know, things are so much more different now that it's hard to even equate what we have to that. But the only thing I can be certain of is that things are going to be very different, and a person, um, let's say I'm frozen in the cryogenics lab like Fry was in Futurama, and I wake up in a hundred years, and not a thousand, and I see what the world is like, it's going to seem very alien to me. And I think that's just how it will be. Um, oh, I missed a question by Wario Land Gold Pyramid. Um, 24. Could you please do a mini Let's Play of Terraria, the 2D Minecraft game? Uh, I don't know. I mean... I'm sure it's a probably a fun game, but the idea of 2D Minecraft doesn't really jump out at me. I mean, maybe there's, um, I mean, I've heard there's a lot more RPG elements to Terraria, but it doesn't really jump out at me as something that I want to do. I mean, if somebody could point me to a really good Let's Play of Terraria, I would be willing to, um, at least give it a, you know give it a watch, and then make up um, judgments for myself based on the viewing. But as it stands now, I'm not really too interested in picking up Terraria. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to answer one more question by Autumn Wind 53 and she only asked one question. I know it's a female, so she only asked one question, so I'll just answer this. Um, she said, had to think for a day here, and my question is, in your Sims 2 playthrough, if you could change, if you could do anything different in that Let's Play, what would it be? And why did you not give Lucy and Amanda more baby toys to learn more skills? Okay, that's actually two questions, but I'll answer the second one first. Um, I honestly didn't know as much about that when Lucy and Amanda were children as I do now. And I was, you know, really struggling to get the twins through their toddler years just because one toddler is hard enough, two is very difficult, and 
I wasn't quite the Sims player back then that I am now. You'd think it, it's funny because I had already been playing The Sims 2 for four years at that point. You'd think I'd be good, but um, I wasn't as good as I am now. But you have to admit that even though they didn't have that when they were kids, they grew up okay, you know? Amanda and Lucy are doing a-okay now, you know? Pretty much all the drama that they're having is more or less engineered <laughs> for the sake of making an interesting show, but they're doing well. So I guess it wasn't too big of a deal. But your other question, what would I change if I could change anything? It's hard to say because I am pretty happy with everything that I did do over the course of The Sims 2 Let's Play. And I wouldn't want anything to be different. But if I had to pick one thing, I wish I would have given Mike and Laura some elixir of life. Not much, but just enough to make their lifespans extend just a little bit because I think it would have been nice for them to get to know their grandkids and their grandkids to have them around as mentors and role models. I mean, James got to know them a little bit and to a, a lesser extent uh, George did as well. But the younger ones will never get to know their grandparents and it's very sad. And I kind of wish I could have given them a few more days of life. That's why with the second generation I'm giving them 12 extra days total. Six extra days of adulthood and six extra days of elderhood. I've already given Amanda and Lucy their doses, their first doses. I'll give Sue her first dose when she becomes a little older, but after Lucy and Amanda are elders for a while, I'll give them their second dose. I mean, I don't plan to keep them around forever, but I want them to live a little bit longer and see their grandkids, if I get that far, and get to experience that. So that would be my regret, my one regret, that I did not do that. But otherwise, I'm very happy with everything that I've done with The Sims 2 so far. Okay, well, I believe... That's a good place to stop this, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for more answers.